I don't know if you can tell behind me, but there's a new piano in our sanctuary here at Hickory. Uh, it is not just an upgrade, it's a whole different ball game. We had a beautiful Baldwin upright for years and years, and it still is here uh, providing music for our church. But as of uh, last night, we have this new beautiful baby grand piano in our sanctuary. You know, oftentimes at Christmas, we get new things. There's been a couple of years where my husband has given me a new cell phone for Christmas, an upgrade. You know how uh, Verizon and other cell phone carriers do. Every two years, you can upgrade. You can get the newest version of your phone. Well, that's a new in time, right? Some updates have been made, but things are fairly similar. This right here is new in kind. <laughs> the, the Baldwin works completely different, the upright piano, than this grand piano does. The Baldwin, the strings are actually upright, whereas the baby grand, the strings run the length of the piano, which changes the way not only it works, but the way it sounds. It's new in kind, even if it's still a piano. Now, Ezekiel, who is a prophet, writing to the people of Israel in a time where they are actually in exile, Life has changed, they've lost everything, and they're holding hope for the day when God will do something new. And what Ezekiel says to the people is the first new thing that God will do is give you a new in kind heart. In Ezekiel uh, chapter 36, he says this, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your stony heart from your body and replace it with a living one. And I will give you my spirit so that you may walk according to my regulations and carefully observe my case law. What God is offering us as a gift, right? Always available, already ours, is a transformation. Not like what came before, we will get a new in kind kind of heart. Not Sarah 2.0, but really a whole new thing. Look, I'm doing a new thing, Isaiah writes, and you haven't experienced it before, and it's right here for you to experience. Your past self, your old self, your old ways, your old selfishness, your old, uh, your old spirit can be made new. God wants to give us a new heart. The heart for the ancient world was the center of being. It was the place where decisions were made. It was the place where emotions were centered. It was the place where the person fully dwelled. You know, sometimes I have a pretty hard heart. Sometimes I get frustrated easily with my children. Sometimes I dig my heels in because I believe I'm right and other people are wrong. Sometimes I just let the old habits have more control in my life than they should. And I have a hard time changing, changing my mind, changing my actions, changing the way I feel. But what God offers us is something new, a living and responsive heart, a heart of flesh. The Hebrew word for, for living there is something that is movable, something that isn't static, something that is willing to change. And the way that we change is not that we decide we're gonna go one direction and everything is suddenly better or new. The difference is, is exactly what Ezekiel says, God says he will put his spirit within us. When we receive the spirit of God, when we start listening for the spirit and the spirit's voice in our life, when we allow the spirit to have a say, our hearts become flexible, responsive to what God is doing. Look, I am already doing a new thing. Let me give you a new heart, God says, a new outlook, a new way of living a new spirit within you. We started this week saying that God has already given us everything we need. Now, this piano is quite a gift. It's amazing. And I'm so thankful for it and so excited for how God will use it here. But you know what I, we really need? Ultimately need? All of us need a heart that is centered on God's spirit. 
That would be the best gift for Christmas. And the truth is, God's already given it. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully someone else can hear this hopeful message. Happy Vlogvent. We finished a whole week together. And now let's move into Advent 2. See you tomorrow. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, reindeer had a very shiny nose like a light ball. And if you ever saw it, saw it, you would even say it glows like a flashlight. All of the other reindeer, reindeer used to laugh and call him names like Pinocchio. They never let poor Rudolph, Rudolph, join in any reindeer games like Monopoly. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, I lost my underwear. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, loved him, as they shouted out with glee, yippee! Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, reindeer, you'll go down in his story like George Washington.